No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today we're blessed once again by the legendary G Herbo. How you doing, G? What's up? What's up? What's up, bro? Feeling good, man. I was just listening to a new album. Uh, they only got me the SoundCloud link this morning, so I only I'm like one and a half listens in, but All it's right, fucking cool. pretty crazy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. PTSD, like that concept has that been. Like you, you were posting on Instagram about how happy you were with this project and how you feel like it's the best body of work that you've had in a long time or ever. Um, what was the theme or like what was the inspiration for this project in particular? Um, I don't think it was like a particular theme or inspiration. I feel like the 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 project was inspired by real life events, by traumatic events, by me embracing um, everything that I've ever been through in life, but not only life, but uh, this past 18 months of my mm -hmm. life, you know what I'm saying? Two years where uh, the fans probably been wondering why I haven't been dropping music, you know what I'm saying? And just really dealing with life itself, you know what I'm saying? How challenges really, you know, no matter what level you're on, you know, you're mm -hmm. going to still in encounter a lot of challenges in life and just embracing them, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm still dealing with a lot of stuff that I've been dealing with for the past 10 years of my life, you know what I'm saying? So... Um, I think it was just inspired by that and, and helping people understand that, you know, what you're going through is not by coincidence, you know what I'm saying, that there is a, a, a destiny for you later, you know what I'm saying, a theme that comes, towards it. There's a theme that comes up on the album a lot, which is kind of like you realizing how damaged your mind is from all the shit that you've endured over the years. And it's like you're not necessarily one of those dudes that's like talking about therapy like it's the solution for all that so much as you just acknowledging that, you're very aware of, of the damage that you've done to yourself, and, or not done to yourself, but the circumstances that you've grown up in and everything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Like, um, therapy, like you said, it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the solution for it, but the solution for me is just understanding and embracing, you know what I'm saying, everything that you go go through in life because it happened for a reason, not saying in, like, a fucked up way where you're not where you're not sensitive to the shit that's going on, you know, because we so normalized and immune to the stuff that we that I've been through and where I come from, that we we don't find a way to heal from it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's about really just leaning towards your problems, man, and understanding that you're going through something for a reason, and it is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel for you if you know what I'm saying. Work towards getting there. So that's what my music is about on the album, you know, and I want to help people with that because, you know, we relate right. in so many ways. Do you worry about yourself when you've seen so many people in your life die that it just, it, it doesn't make the same impact every time? It's almost like you find yourself moving on too quickly and you start to mm -hmm. worry about yourself. What does that say about me that one of my good friends died and, mm -hmm. I, and I, my brain is so e yeah. able to move past it? Yeah, uh, I dealt with that for for a lot of years, trying to like, what is like thinking like damn do I not care you know what I'm saying but it was of course it's not that it's just um and it's crazy that I, my album is called PTSD because I'm thinking about something now and it's like I watch a lot of movies and I be reading shit um like people in wars like I talk to people and I've even seen movies like I, I'm the person that believe if something in the movie this shit is true mm. period uh um, so like people who go to war and shit, these vets when they in the field and they they don't they don't dwell on it. They don't dwell on what's going on. They don't think about outside life. They don't think about I got a mother at home, I got a daughter at home, I got a sister at home, my brother just died. They tuned in to make sure they ensure their life and their safety. And I think that was the mindset that I had at the time and just, you know what I'm saying, trying to stay tapped into that so I could understand that this was going on. You know, like I can't really dwell on niggas dying if I'm gonna be in the streets because that's what happened when niggas in the street. Niggas right. die, niggas go to jail. You can't dwell on it, even if you care or not. You're not finna, I can't grieve in, in, in a sense in certain, you know what I'm saying, instances because I gotta go out here and dance with these same lions and wolves again. So that grief may cost me my life or my freedom. So right. I feel like that's that was my mindset when but I was in the street. Then those dudes come home from war and they never recover. They never recover, but they have to, you know, as uh, there's like a mo there's a moment where you're so young that you're just doing shit and you're seeing fucked up shit and you're so young that you don't necessarily understand that, yeah. how it's affecting you. Then those guys come back from war 
and they have to try to put, put the pieces back together. Yeah. They got to figure out how to keep living, even yeah. though they just saw 10 of their friends get murdered. Yeah, either they, either like I said, they don't recover or they got to, it's a building process. You got to have a strong mind and a will to know that, that, you, that you can do that, that it take time to put these pieces back together. And it take time to, for other people to understand why you do that. Because I'm the type of guy that I don't really like, I may let you in, but I'm not going to really let you in because these are my problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't like putting my problems on other people or really for you to understand my problems because you may judge me or want me to behave a certain way because of my problems. And I know how I need to behave. You know what I'm saying? Because I think about shit or just how I feel the need to behave. So, um, and with understanding that and me being one of those kind of guys where I had to, you know, put the pieces back together and rebuild, um, you it's a, you got to have a strong will. Like I mm -hmm. said, it's a it's a strategic thing, kind of like where you knowing like, all right, I'm in a fucked up, you know what I'm saying, mindset, and mm -hmm. I got to behave a certain way. I got to treat my loved ones a certain way and they might not even understand it because you know what i'm saying i got this mental sickness i feel like you're somebody who you came in the game talking a lot of street shit and now it's like the challenge for you now is to figure out how to open up more and more and how to like i, I feel like you're somebody who's realized that the more you open up and the more vulnerable you make yourself and the more you give to your audience the more that they're going to love you especially as your career gets older because yeah. it's like there's, there's always going to be the young 16 year old kid who's talking crazy guns and drug shit yeah. and that's always going to happen it's like if people are going to stay with you throughout these years they, yeah. they're going to want depth and they're going to want you to give right. them more and more of your personality yeah and that kid could could also be how i was the kid that just need to see more understand and just grow you know what i'm saying um and you just got to let life do that for him mm -hmm. and i think just really you know yeah me being that artist that could talk about like my most vulnerable states in life, I feel it do appeal to my my audience more because we all human, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We all go through these emotions, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people who in the streets don't know how to deal with their emotions because they gotta behave a certain way. Like I said, they gotta be in these situations over and over again where they can't even relive moments that just happened yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, you know what I'm saying? So uh, with me, understanding that I was once that, you just gotta have vision in life. It's all about, you can't li really live life. Even when you out here living life on the edge, I was in the streets, I knew I could die or go to jail every day I left the house. But I knew in my mind I didn't want to, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I knew I could and I was basically willing to for putting myself in these situations, but I had further vision. I saw myself being more than just that. So life is about that. You gotta have vision, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's gotta, you gotta get the most out of every situation in life because it's a purpose right. for you. So I think me talking about that, it helped people better understand like, damn, I feel the same way, but I just couldn't express it or I didn't think I was right about feeling that way. You know what I'm saying? We had these feelings in the back of our head and we ignore them and we box them in because of the reality that we gotta deal with on a day to day don't make sense with our inner thoughts, mm. but it makes sense because you thought it. You know Those same fans that might have appreciated Appreciated you when you were a teenager talking tough is like the same people that as they're getting older they're trying to figure out what is really going on in their mentality and yeah. they're going to want to grow with you over time you know yeah yeah definitely and and that's important I want my fans to grow with me over time that's why I talk about life so they can see my growth and maybe how I would have dealt with a certain situation when I was 17 how, versus how I deal with it today at 24. You right. know what I'm saying? But is it hard for you to talk about like relationship shit? You definitely get into that a bit mm -hmm. on the album. Is it yeah. hard for you because you're, you know, part of the problem with interviewing people a lot of time is that a lot of dudes just straight up grow up with like the code of the streets embedded in them where they the, the rules are like you don't talk to people you don't know, you don't talk on the record, you definitely don't talk on camera, you keep that shit in and it's just kind of a lot of people have that built into them. Like a lot of like somebody in your position, there's a lot of rappers who are from the same place as you, very similar circumstances. You will never hear them open up about their girl mm -hmm. because they don't want to seem soft. They don't want to open up like that. It's just kind of messy, et cetera. Um, Is yeah. that a challenge for you to open up like that? Uh, a little bit, but I'm confident in myself as a man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I, I'm fully confident in myself as a man and knowing that. I'm not taken away from my masculinity by embracing these situations in my life because these same dudes who want to be tough and the same, you know what I'm saying, who really, like you said, similar to me, same situation, same backgrounds, all that, who not embracing it, that feel the same way but don't want to embrace it because they're looking at the, 
the the judge the judgment they gonna get from the next person or the next dude who exactly like them who mm-hmm. holding it in. So if y'all the same way, y'all going through the same emotions, but y'all don't want to talk about it because y'all think y'all both gonna clash with each other. You know what I'm saying? We all the same at the end of the day, bro. Mm-hmm. I know I'm a gangster. I'm a real gangster. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I ain't never like ever felt less of a man in my life. So I feel like me talking about that, that's even more gangster. You right. know what I'm saying? So, but. There's, there's a difference between you deciding to talk about your feelings or, or what you've been through in terms of relationships on a record versus when just you wake up one day and that shit is all over the blogs. Like, mm-hmm. how does that feel that's in crazy. comparison that you because are like, you got to wake up and read about yourself? That's why I talk about it, because nine times out of ten, what you see in the blogs is not actually mm. my feelings. It's not actually what may have happened or is what you see in the res- blogs where people may have responded for me might not be the response that I might have said if I actually opened my mouth and I'm mm-hmm. not going to do that. I'm not going to entertain the blogs or entertain the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like my music is a form of therapy. Even when I talk about stuff, I'm not talking about it for the recognition of the blogs or the clear that mm-hmm. I'm talking about it to get it off my chest and to speak to the people who I may care about their opinions or that are important to me that I may not open my mouth verbally to say because we caught up in what's there and I'm not going to appeal to those people ever. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely just a a big decision for you because like you'll have little bits of shit that's been captured on social media and then you'll have the blogs creating yeah, a whole narrative exactly. out of that and saying, well, we got this they clip of this happening, time. this right, happening, right, right. so clearly this so happened. So if this happened past tense and he may have said this six months ago, that don't mm. mean I was feeling that way when this situation might happen because I probably never even seen the situation mm. happen when I spoke on what I may have did in the situation. You got know what but I'm saying? But a lot of times you coming out and saying, like, that didn't happen, this is what happened. Right, right. But it might not even help. It might exactly. be, like, of course he's going to say that. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you, you just <laughs> hit it right on the head. So, like, saying going to, this, why going not to say address this? it yeah. right then, I don't address situations because I know I live a regular life every day, and mm. the people who are a part of my life understand me fully through and through, and they know even when I make mistakes, I embrace my mistakes, I try to correct my mistakes. So I don't really care to to explain that to the people who don't know me at all who probably don't even try to address their mistakes or who got these same problems that you know what i'm saying don't even know how to deal with them in a way you would go crazy alone just trying to you know what i'm saying please them people and please the people who actually in your life who mean something you know what i'm saying you're gonna overwhelm yourself so mm. i just try to stay focused on the shit that matter definitely is there something about Jay? Like you got a long standing appreciation for Jay. You started out with the the Dynasty instrumental yeah, and of then course. the other one, the last song was uh the, the Feel It in the Air instrumental. Yeah. Uh what what does that represent to you, choosing um, to use his instrumentals in a situation where most people don't do that these days? Um, I think especially with that Dynasty record, I was thinking like and I was, I had I had DM um I was playing with Meek and shit, like just certain songs, I really be in the studio. Like, what if what if Hov hit this? What if Meek hit this? You feel what I'm saying? Like, what if they was in the studio with me? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, a lot of times we run from them samples and we run from these records, but it's really just showing homage and embracing it and trying to see if I'm not necessarily trying to top records. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be me on these records. Where like, damn. I fuck with that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a certain energy that comes and, with and, that shit. And I, 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 yeah, it's it's definitely, but I feel like I'm a child of hip-hop anyway, you know what I'm saying? I grew up appreciating hip-hop, I know what it is, and everything that I don't know about hip-hop, I'm always the one that's willing to learn. So mm-hmm. it's like, with me being that, it's easy for me to try to fit on these records, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's easy for me to touch the Beanie Seagull record, because I grew up listening to that record. It's easy for me to touch that Dynasty sample, because as soon as I played it, I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. And it's easy for me to carry it a certain way, because you might play that for another artist, he just hear it like, damn, that be fire, he don't even know what it originated from. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, when you look at Jay, though, and you look at Meek, and you look at the way that like Jay obviously has become something in hip-hop that we've never really seen before, and it feels yeah. like he's really setting Meek up to have a similar exactly. trajectory. I mean, that's an incredible thing to see. And also, I'm curious, like, to what extent you see that future for yourself of really being able to take your role in hip-hop oh, yeah, to a different level. Every day, that's why I'm doing it, man. And I always saw myself that as a kid or even when I first stepped into it when I didn't even know what it took to get there. Mm. You know, like I said, these kids had these aspirations and don't really know you think is kind of is conflicting with what you're dealing with on the reality but you had those aspirations for a reason man you know what i'm saying so i always like wanted to be that top tier artist i always wanted to be that top tier businessman i always wanted to have a legendary legacy at the end of the day when i go out of this shit mm. so 
um, now understanding and seeing what I'm building towards, it's important for me to do that. And I think that's why my music reflected and I do business that way where it's like I'm I'm betting on myself in all aspects, you know what I'm saying? If you're not willing to really believe in me and bet on myself, I mean bet on me, then I wouldn't put myself in a position for somebody to do otherwise. And I think that's what Hove did. That's what Meek did. You know what I'm saying? That's what they doing. Mm. Um, I think that's the recipe for success in this business nowadays. You know what I'm saying? What, what we up against now. So, mm. yeah, I, I'm definitely, everything I do is strategic. That's why people might not understand it. But I think about every little thing I do, even when I'm doing something off of have got just to get, you know what I'm saying, the result that I see fit from fit for myself, I'm going to do just that because I know what I'm working towards. You know what I'm saying? Everybody might not, but I know what I'm working towards. Right, because, I mean, you come from such humble beginnings when we think about the fucking drill wave and everything. Yeah. And to see that you're still, like, doing so well for yourself in your career is very positive, very enthusiastic. But, I mean, Meek and Jay come from similar situations, really. Yeah, and just it's, it's consistency and longevity yeah, and, and staying and, on top and, of and it. And what you're saying, and I appreciate that, bro, but it's so much behind the scenes that people don't see. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? And, and that's even more important with being that, you know, having that longevity and having that success in this business. You got to take the bad that come with the good and mm. even with the bad and rebuild you know what i'm saying sometimes you got to reinvent yourself like ho will probably tell you i had to reinvent myself uh mm -hmm. me can probably tell you i had to reinvent myself like a lot of these guys it's not really changing who you are but it's like we run into problems this mm -hmm. is a this is a business this 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 probably the most lucrative business that's similar to the streets mm -hmm. so you're going to endure some heartbreak in this shit you're going to endure some problems some bumps in the road and i feel like when you take the bad just as well as the good in this business, you able to, you know what I'm saying, mm. stick through it. You able to stick it out. But there, like Jay's career is like marked with all these moments in which he stopped doing shit that he was doing before. Like exactly. he, at a certain moment he said, I'm not really rapping about street shit the same exactly. way that I used to. I'm not wearing the same clothes. I'm exactly. not gonna have the spinners on my car or whatever. Had exactly. there been moments like that for you where there's like, you know what, there's shit that I've been doing since the beginning of my yeah. rap career and I gotta leave that in the past. Yeah. Absolutely, and one of them was just being deep in the streets. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Like, really still being in the streets, you know what I'm saying? That was one of the most, you know, tough, toughest things I had to do. And just, you know what I'm saying, really about trying to please everybody else around me. It wasn't about what I wanted to do. It was what I got to do. Like mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, you feel like Jay-Z said, I'm not going to do this no more because it's going it's stuff that come with every decision that you make. I ain't going to rasp in this. I ain't going to spread about the streets. I ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Because it's energy that come with that. And if it's not always in alignment with you meeting your goals that you set for yourself, you got to cut, let that go. And I had mm -hmm. to make these same decisions. And you know what I'm saying? Everybody who's going to be put in this position going to have to make the decisions, and that's going to be the dis difference in making and breaking you because if you don't make those decisions, you're not going to get where you want to go. But there's a lot of hard decisions in that. because the if toughest decision. If you decide that you want to really focus on your career and be serious about your career, well, guess what? With that comes... I'm going to have to tell yeah. this dude he ain't yeah. coming on tour exactly. anymore. I'm going to tell this dude he ain't going to be around at all anymore. It's and they sacrifices. didn't feel like you're a traitor to them, etc. There's a lot that comes with that. Yeah, but... I learned also with Gene when people, man, if people love you even in disappointment, you know what I'm saying, and on heartbreak, they going to still love you when they understand. So you got to put people to those tests. I put people, now I learned, like I put the people I love to the test the most mm. because you got to stand the test of time because I know how I am even in, I've, 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 I've fell out with a lot of the people that I love the most. But the love never changed. It always been genuine. It always worked out. Life gonna work itself out if it's meant to be. I learned that. That's something I always learned. What's meant to be will always be. Mm. So I'm not afraid to make those decisions no more. Really? Because yeah. there's a lot of people who are. There's a lot of people who are, who are kind of stuck in this like prison of who they're around, and they yeah. feel like they can't break away from that. And, and you're acting like it goes smoothly. A lot of times it, it's it, very difficult, it's, right? I, I've been through those times where it was the most difficult. But so it always it comes smoothly. around from your experience? Yeah, it always mm. go around. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get into it with my best of friends when I was in, when in the streets because I was, I'm was i loyal to a fault. Mm. A phone call, just something as simple as a phone call, could pull me right back into that environment. So I had to cut ties completely. Right. You know how hard that was for me and people who literally know I'm going to pick up the phone every time you call. Now I'm not picking it up no more. Mm. It was a point where we like, fuck each other. But these same people, these are the same people 
And I never, you would never know that we went through this shit. You know what I'm saying? But these the same people that's still around me every day when you're going to see me and when I am at these dinners and I'm at the shit that I'm doing, these the same people that was around, that was around when I first started doing this. You know what I'm saying? So what's meant to be will be. I know who my real friends are. I know who my real family is. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been put through those tests that life will put you through. Mm, definitely. How well did you know Pop? Um, I never met Pop, but okay. I felt like I knew him a lot because I just been supporting him since I heard him. Right. What was I it in particular like that stood him, out to, to you? Like, um, just the music in particular? Yeah, or music, he just had that energy? To his energy and to be honest, I got friends who like from that area, who from the Flossie, you mm. know what I'm saying? Who from uh that side of Brooklyn. So um I just fucked with it. I'm like, oh yeah, he rock with bro and them shit hard, you feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like and it was about the beats, to be honest, like uh DJ L sent it to me, who first was producing my show when it came out. Like, right. yeah, you hear this? They going crazy. And then I'm like, yeah, they is going crazy. Right. And then I was just fucking, that was welcome to the party. Like, when it first, I don't even think it had a million views yet. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Definitely. But, like, that that shit, I think, was just particularly terrifying because you look at his situation, and I, I said this on the podcast the other day, but if I had been talking to Pop Smoke and giving him advice on life, I would have said, bro, get the fuck out of New York. Go get yourself a, a nice little spot up in L.A., But California. he wasn't in New York. Huh? He wasn't in Exactly. New York. Yeah, he did. He was pretty much doing what right. I would have said that he should have done. And I think artists are used. New York artists be cool mm -hmm. if you maneuver in New York a certain way. You don't really like New York artists be good. Like, New York artists got it good, bro. Like, right. for real, to be honest, if you ask me. Like, I'm not saying it's not fucked up out there, but... Casanova's still in New York. Hey, Boogie, them dudes still in New York. Even when they not there, they go to New York still, like... You know, you able to have success in New York if you move a certain way because, shit, it's environments in New York that's going to allow you to do that. You right. know what I'm saying? And it's opportunities, it's resources in New York that's going to allow you to do that. So I probably wouldn't even told him that. I thought, like, that's crazy. You, It was a shocker. You would never think that he was on that path. Uh, I was way know? more worried about the cops, like, forming a case against him because that's what happens to every yeah, rapper they got from the Brooklyn. hip-hop police and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Every, every hot... Rapper coming up out of New York has gotten a big ass game yeah, related no, case. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that to me seems like it was probably going to happen, especially because he, you know, was involved with a lot of different accusations of violence yeah. and all this shit. Yeah, so, I ain't never really, I went into that. I ain't never know nothing about that shit. Right, but I mean that that is why I would have told him to get out of New York, and then to see him come out here and just like, I mean, I feel like that story just hit a lot of people yeah, really no, hard that shit was because it it was weird. just so upward trajectory for him non-stop he was just going everything going great seemed like he had so much personality and charisma and people liked him so much and he was so young he's only 20 yeah yeah that's crazy that's crazy crazy yeah when you look at like the the drill thing though because it, it exists not just in new york but like i seen a fucking vice Shit, video about in, like london drill, australia new zealand there's like one <laughs> drill rapper yeah. in new zealand or whatever and now but it's kind of crazy because like we've seen all you guys emerge from that and certain people like you and dark and keep and stuff who really became real artists out of all that mm -hmm. pop smoke was like the first one to really emerge from that brooklyn definitely, drill definitely. scene definitely like he broke he all he broke as an artist he was gone mm. like it was particularly like damn that that he was going to be the big one that came out of that scene and for it to just fucking go out oh, like yeah, that man. Just seems... prayers go out to his family for sure that shit is weird man it just i don't know you gotta like as as a coach and as artists or just you know what i'm saying young men together we gotta just see the reason and, and shit you know what i'm saying just really i don't know like think we got to be strategic not saying like i'm i'm talking about like people who out here had these opportunities you know what i'm saying you got to really like just just be calculated out here mm, for real um i see that you got juice on your shirt right now has that yeah. been i mean he's on the album is that like it's it's almost like i know you're talking about a lot of shit that you've been dealing with on this album outside of that but like in particular how does that feel and just to see somebody who was that talented at such a young age uh man i don't know we still you know we dealing with that shit every day to be honest man it's still still like unbelievable you know so um man i don't know you know that was my real little brother bro so it's like you feel me like i know shorty i knew him mm. and it's like um I don't know, this, this shit is real. PTSD is real. Anxiety is real. You know what I'm saying? Addiction is real. All that shit is real, you know? So, um, and and just, uh, I think 
like a lot of these people on the outside looking in, you know, like you got to understand that you got to understand that we all human at the end of the day, you know, like you will look at an artist or a kid like Juice Real with him being as big as he is and think he's supposed to be perfect. He was 22. He was only 20. You know, mm-hmm. So he's 20, what, he just made 21? Just hit 21 when just he passed. Just hit 21. Yeah. So he was still 20, basically, you know what I'm saying? So it was like he was a kid. Um, and, you know, I don't really want to speak too much on it, but just, you know, shit shit is, is real. Every Everything in life is, is sad to say it, it don't happen by coincidence. So when people fight anxiety or, you know what I'm saying, addiction, that is is real is reasons why you know what i'm saying i don't think that kid was doing drugs to fit in right. never never i saw it really connect with you when we we're at rolling loud and i saw you up on stage during that tribute set and like you have one bar where you just mention him and i just i saw it just hit you and you just teared up yeah. immediately like it was just it just I, I could already feel it that you were you were going through it but then that just like pushed you over the edge and that yeah. was just it really was, intense it was to like see. A, it was just a crazy moment that i was like doing the tribute to him at Rolling Loud. It was mm-hmm. just super crazy, man. And I don't know, like, I've been dealing with death for a long time, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm no stranger to death. But it's just like, I don't know, like that moment, I, and I don't even think that was the first time I cried or nothing like that, but it's just still every day. Like, I don't think, it, I don't, of course, I'm not even gonna say I don't think, I ain't, it ain't even been a day I, he ain't crossed my mind in some form or fashion, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, and a lot of people deal with that every day. A lot of these people who haven't even lost as many homies as me deal with trying to, you know, overcome the trauma and heartbreak, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't even mind talking about it, you know what I'm saying, sometimes. And just, you know, but Shorty was special. Like mm-hmm. Everybody who ever been around him knew he was special. And I just said, actually, in an interview, like, it's crazy. What he was to Chicago, to me, and what he did is, like, how Big, Biggie had that short career, how mm. Pac had that short career, but their legacy is so like I feel he he's he was he was that. It was like hard, it's hard crazy. to believe how big he got it's and crazy. how and beloved like, it was. It's so crazy. I feel like even f- it's forever like we just keeping his legacy alive. He gonna be that kid that you always gonna know. You always gonna hear his music like thirty forty. Yeah, from not the same as a, a Pac or Biggie. Like I, I think to yeah. me, if you ask me, I just said that the other day. No, yeah, I totally, I totally believe that. There's definitely plenty of artists today. Like I hate how people are always refusing to put artists from today in that same category. It's like we got a whole lot of legends right now that no, realistically will be viewed like, that you way. You know, in time, Pac and Biggie, they met their demise almost twenty, what well, thirty years ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, juice is that for our generation. Mm. Period. When people ask you your top five rappers, like, or actually, you hopped in that conversation. Did you post one? I did. Yeah. How like do you feel like that's kind of a like your your list was very much. This is what I really fuck with, mm-hmm. not what I feel like I'm supposed I gotta, to say. Like, I fuck all with. time. I got it right now. You feel what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. But it's kind of weird because people always want to try to act like you got to have like oh you're tripping if you don't have these people, people on your list. That, yeah, There's a lot of people not. that are legends that I never really listened to that much yeah. and maybe I respect them but I'm Absolutely. not they're not my top 10. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. It's just, music is about what's true to you. That's why so many artists, you know what I'm saying? There's so many it's billions of people in this world. That's why so many artists cuz there's so many type of different people to relate to, you know what I'm saying? So it's mm. like one artist, you can't really think you're going to appeal to all of the billions of people in the world. You know what I'm saying? Even mm-hmm. if you appeal to millions, that's awesome. That's amazing. If you got a million fans, two, three million people that listen to your music, your art that's true to you that you didn't even think probably was going to make it off of the block you grew up on. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like you got to it's depending on what you're doing it for. Some people grateful for what they got. Some people want more, you know? Mm-hmm. What, uh, you got a song with Chance, uh, Juice, and Uzi all together. Yeah. How did that come about? And was that already all put together, like, way before Juice passed? Or was that uh, something that came together after? I, I actually, um, yeah, well, it was me, Chance, and, me, Chance, and Juice on the record. And then I, I wouldn't put Uzi on okay. the record. But, um... The record just it came about naturally to be honest man it, and i knew it was gonna be a like it was the it was the most important record on my on my album really period before to me like i thought you know what i'm saying like 
just substance wise and it's the title track. Oh, it's like the title I knew track, yeah. It was gonna be the you know, a, a real, real important record before Lil Bro even, you know what I'm saying, met his demise. And and that is like I don't, I ain't you know, that was my little brother, so I don't really even get into the music. It ain't even about the music. I'm I'm more than thankful, blessed to be able to even have this song right now out, but it's like I rather enjoy his life, you know what I'm saying? So hmm. um the record, it's a, it's a very special record. It's a message behind the record. I feel like it'll help millions of people. Mm, definitely. Um, you, you got a bunch of skits on there, though. There's one in particular. Who was who the guy that called you up and told you about a drive-by that he just did or whatever? Hmm? On the skits on the album? Oh, yeah. No, actually, I ain't going to lie. To be honest, man. It kind of sounded real. They sent you, they sent you the... Uh, they sent you the uh, the SoundCloud link that I was I, I was thinking about using at first. Oh, so there's here. changes that yeah, we made. Yeah, I ain't gonna put the, the skits in there. Oh, I ain't put okay. Because I wanted them to align with how the songs. Oh, okay. Did so I did a bunch of a bunch of skits, but um, I think I'm I'm a, I, I, I'm gonna use them for something, but I ain't, I actually took them off because I originally was gonna do like 20 songs. Uh -huh. To be honest, you know what I'm saying. And I've been working on this project for so long, like the music just kept getting better, and I ain't wanna like. I wanted to get back to skits, so I ain't really wanna. I wanted them to really flow into each other. You right. know what I'm saying? That's a tough decision these days, yeah. though, because the skits do make the album stand out and add character to it and everything. But then at the same time, in this current generation where it's all about streaming and yeah. shit, sometimes... a lot of times people don't be wanting to really hear the skits. And mm. I think I ain't wanna really, because I had, I wanted the skits to literally tell a story, so I might do that with a shorter project. You know mm. what I'm saying? I feel like this project was actually perfect the way it was without the skits. Right. No, that makes sense. What's your relationship with Chance like? Oh, that's my brother. Right. For real. Like, that's my real brother. We talk all the time. Every time we see each other, it's a party. You know what I'm saying? Every we, time he gets on a song with you, I'm kind of like, damn, I wish he rap like this all the time. No, I ain't going to lie. I really, <laughs> um, I really, no, nah, for real though, like, I really, me and Chance been having songs since probably 14, 13. Like, Chance really always been like, Top from right. Chicago, if you ask Definitely. me. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even before, like, I remember early, even before he dropped Acid Rap, like, just what what his, how big his movement was, like, you could not then and not hear. Right. Because it was crazy on a real underground level before yeah, it became my, as big as it is yeah, now. Yeah, but, and really for an artist to be his biggest chance and still be as humble as he is, bro, like, chance really, like, that's a real good dude. Like, I be saying to fuck with the local rappers. It ain't even me. Like, he just, he, he love everybody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even gonna say I feel special calling him my brother because he really, like, a lot of people could call him they brother. Mm. He a good dude. Definitely. Uh, he got a lot of blowback because he put out an album that was, like, very positive, very friend, very, like, family friendly, very much focused on, like, how much he loves his wife and shit. And it felt like a lot of people really did not respond to that as positively because as he thought people, it would. Uh, negative you know it don't matter it's people who love their wife who responded to it exactly right. how he wanted it to you know what i'm saying like i said you can't keep doing the same thing like his music is true to him like my music is true to me right now you know what i'm saying so he got that music trust me he got that music that appealed to mm -hmm. hit that audience who want that kind of music you know what i'm saying and i'm sure he gonna drop it you know chance is a very talented artist he could do that it's not many artists that's gonna be able to talk about they love for their wife and right. successfully do it you know what i'm saying but do you feel like you might potentially in the future be at a place in your life where you're so comfortable and so positive that maybe your original fans don't get what they're really looking for out of your music because you know there's a lot of people want to listen to your music they want to just hear some straight street shit yeah but that'll be lying if i ain't doing it. my music was always true to me i was rapping street shit when i was really in the streets it's niggas who rapping street shit who ain't never been in the streets, who ain't in the streets no more. Mm. So I don't think I'm always be able to rap and be connected to that super savage shit unless I go put myself in an environment. And you got to. I done heard artists like sometimes like um, even like Future, fucking with Future. He like, bro, your music got to be true to that. You know, niggas that go be in these other countries and all this shit mm. ain't seen a Draco in four, five years. How the fuck you going to rap about a Draco? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... No um, idea how people are talking. Exactly. So it's like my music always been true to me. I was j real through and through. Like if you go listen to these people who ain't never heard my music when I was really in the streets, go listen to that and you're going to be able to understand the music that I'm rapping right. right now. You know what I'm saying? I was really in the streets. So if I'm not really in the streets no more, I could talk about it in a sense of being through it, but I'm not going to say, da 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 I'm in the streets, so I'll shoot a nigga right now, you feel me? Right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really going to keep 
talking about that if I'm not doing that because I'm going to welcome that energy. And I know I'm the type of nigga where I'm a, I probably might really have to shoot a nigga if that energy <laughs> come towards me. So yeah. I ain't even going to welcome it. I mean, when, <laughs> when you hear people saying street shit or saying, like, I'll shoot a motherfucker or whatever, but you don't feel like but there's I ain't, ever I'm, a discussion. I'm positive, man. Right. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? I don't even bring that energy. So I'm going to really take that back saying that I don't even, you know what I'm saying, want to bring that energy on to myself. But uh, my music always true to me. So I feel I, when people... <clears throat> Lose connection to that is other artists who gon' you know what I'm saying please them when they want to hear that. I mean, you got to be able to talk about street shit and be able to Always. talk about the entirety of it. Always. The bad sides, the the pot, how you really feel when you really do. Has Jay Z still here? Has Jay Z able because to rap? he can still give us a perspective exactly. on his history. He can yeah. give you a perspective on it. Jay Z never gonna really physically put out an art a, a a song where he talking about bringing harm or bodily harm to somebody mm -hmm. himself because he hold, he don't even got to lift a finger. You know right. what I'm saying? But he could talk about it because he been through it. And I feel like I want my music to grow like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm 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 not a liar, bro. I can't lie. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not. I ain't. I think I'm going to name that my next album, man. I ain't never lying to my raps. Don't, don't take my <laughs> shit. <laughs> I like that. Um, speaking of future, I was looking at, when I was getting ready for this, I actually looked at your girl's Instagram story for the first time in my life, and I saw <laughs> her marveling at Lori Harvey's fridge because she had mad <laughs> drinks in there. <laughs> And yeah, I was wondering, yeah, like, close. do you do you, have you been around Future like on just some chill shit like through we them just, being friends? We was just on vacation. We went to Jamaica together. How was that? It was fun. It was, we had a ball, man. We was just in, in Jamaica. I don't know, five six days or some shit. Right. Fuck one, but that one never like my first time vibing around, bro, and nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's different now that our girls like you know what I'm saying best friends and shit like that. But is it kind of crazy because it's like at the end of the day that is future and he's kind of larger than life and yeah, he's definitely hell, doing yeah. rapper shit that not many other rappers do. Yeah, yeah. But I look at it like everything happened for a reason. I wouldn't even be around a nigga like that if I wasn't. Right. You know what I'm saying meant to to end up in these rooms eventually. So definitely learn from niggas like that. Embrace it. Are you able it. to laugh at the future memes? Uh, I don't really be watching all that shit for real. Nah, I don't really be. I don't be laughing at memes to mm -hmm. be honest. I don't be laughing at nobody memes. Really? Because like nowadays they try to. They've kind of turned future into. It's this, so like, many you can't even see it for real. It's but, so many. A nigga like him is unlimited memes. They've just turned him into like a a meme of like toxic male behavior. Like no matter <laughs> what's going on, that's like they try to like rope future into it somehow. I feel like they do it to you a little bit too. Like yeah, guys. People, it's all all type of stereotypes out here about a motherfucker because you got the again the internet perception of the people who look at you know what I'm saying your actions from afar and they judging it from afar mm -hmm. and you don't really know what's what these actions are motivated by. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird to just be that popular that people are that interested in your life, huh? Yeah, it's crazy because <laughs> at the end of the day, I guarantee you. He know who he is. He know he larger than life, but that man feel like a regular nigga. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We all regular niggas at the end of the day. He don't want you to put him on a pedestal. He wants you to treat him like Pluto. Definitely. Do you, uh, like, are you super aware at this point that you could just make girls famous and just start careers just through being around them and stuff? <laughs> like, yeah, we've yeah, seen it happen, but, but are you scared of that superpower now? Uh... I don't know. I mean, you got to know how to harness it. No, I ain't. I ain't. I ain't afraid of none of my powers. I embrace all my powers and I use them accordingly. You know mm. what I'm saying? Anybody in that position. I'm not saying it's just me. I ain't special. Anybody in that position. A female could change a nigga life. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. just gotta. It's what we. It's what the world turned into nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but I mean, it's it's just kind of crazy to see that happening and to see your name keep getting brought up in situations that have nothing to do with you. Like nothing at all, man. I don't yeah. be thinking about. It. I swear, I swear, I don't be paying attention to that shit. You feel me? Like I know it's there. Don't get me wrong. I might mm -hmm. see it, but it ain't never gonna go longer than me seeing it. I mean, it ain't much more than that. Right. Definitely. I mean, at a certain point, you gotta just yeah. you gotta just be able. Cause you'll go annoying. crazy thinking about that shit, bro. You got a thousand people saying you a asshole or you this and you mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? So, and every girl I ever dated in my life, you know what they're doing right now? I don't know. I have no no <laughs> fucking clue. They're probably married. They ain't they're doing whatever. But I got no clue because I didn't make them famous at that point. <laughs> but if I fucked them now, if I dated them now, they might be famous after, or at least a little bit famous after. I mean, people are gonna keep me up to date. Hey man, Adam, my old ass crazy, man. <laughs> it's just real. Nah, mm -hmm. but I mean, this 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 is life nowadays, man. Mm, that's facts. Um, so are you ready for uh, the smoke with the LGBT community for uh, saying I used to sleep in the bed with my brothers, but we ain't no fags? Uh, or is it just nah, that that I to mean, me felt like a real ass <laughs> lyric that you were just like, 
Just you didn't care. You were in that mindset. Yeah, You're not worried about how people are react. Yeah, I didn't because I'm. I was saying it in a sense where I'm not. Of course, I'm not throwing shots at that, and I. I was saying like, bro, I'm gonna have to send my apology out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I got. I, I'm definitely not like homophobic or nothing like that. I don't have no problem with. You know what I'm saying? Them at all. Mm-hmm. I got a cousin who I grew up with, and my like all my family. We grew up in the one household, and he is. Like homosexual, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. that's my one of my favorite cousins, you know what I'm saying? So, but coming from your background, I mean, is is that something where you see your family reacting to a strange? Is it, is it No, nobody that's no? what I'm saying. I grew up in a family where we embraced him. We never changed, never switched up on that's him. Dope to hear. He's the life of the party every time he's around us. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about from a street perspective. I really slept in the bed with my brother. Like that's a masculinity where niggas like we ain't had nothing but an air bed, a mattress, a couch, three, four niggas sleeping on the couch. Right. I really slept in the bed with my brothers at night, but we ain't no fags. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't throwing a shot at them. Them. That's I one of the hardest songs on the album, though. I meant what I said. Gang, that, you know what I'm saying? And all love and respect to that community. Mm. Wow, I respect it. I just fucking. It's interesting because people want want you to clean up your language these days. Yeah, even if they, it's... and people recommended me changing that line, but I'm like I said, I'm gonna stand in front of everything that I do and say. You know what I'm saying? And definitely losing Kobe, that hit you hard. Yeah. Of course. What was it? Was it the man, the athlete, the father? Like how, how everything. Do you feel the it? athlete, the man, the father, the 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 dog, the animal. I think that's what I love the most about him. He was a real lad dog. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that he got in life, he went and took it. Like I know about Kobe going to play in um Europe when he was a kid. You know what right. I'm saying? Then coming back to Philly to dominate. You know how much dedication that took to go out there and master your craft. Before you even got to high school, right? For a reason, because you knew you was gonna come and dominate the people who taking that shit for granted, who taking life and, you know, what I'm saying the luxuries and everything for granted. You know, what I'm saying he was always locked in as a kid, so everything that he got in life was for a reason. And I studied that, I valued that. You know, what I'm saying so, um, and and I put that to my craft and music, even though I had a passion for basketball that everybody know that I got. You know, what I'm saying so. I took, I did take the loss of Kobe real serious, and I'm still like, to this like looking at it on the internet. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. And just how it happened with his daughter and everything too. Yeah. As a father, that's got a really fucking hit. Absolutely, and um, and really, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even. That's mind blowing. That's why I really, I I barely like speak on Gigi because it's so crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like that was really, that was the daddy's girl right there. You know what I'm saying? Like I really like, from. I love Kobe through and through, bro. Like, I really mm. used to be on his page, saw the clip of two, three, four years ago when he post up with him again, a little sad step to him, shooting in his face. I'm like, damn, that's real baby Kobe, the girl, you know what I'm saying? So, like, to, you know, that's crazy. Yeah. How do you feel seeing people bring up, like, every – well, not that – there's that much negativity, but people want to try to find an opportunity to talk about anything negative they can say about that's, someone that's what after you, they that's pass. That's what people do, man. That's what – that's what people do. They gonna kick you when you down. Mm. People, everybody gonna, you know what I'm saying? You, that's what you you build the foundation and, and understanding that you knowing that people gonna always try to tarnish your legacy when they don't have the tools to build their own. You know? Right. No, I mean, I was thinking about that because I seen, you know, when X died, I seen certain media companies yeah. just straight shitting on them, mm-hmm. and then Pop dies, and they're acting like it's a tragedy, and I'm like. Like, what is the difference in your mind? Like, why does one person get to be a hero and one person has to be a villain? Exactly. The truth is that we're all in the middle. Exactly. Everybody, life, all our lives are valuable. Everybody, life is valuable. You know what I'm saying? And everybody got somebody that love them. Everybody. Mm. So, um, you know, you got to understand that and treat people that way. Like, you know, even when you you might look at somebody a certain way, but you somebody love that person. Definitely. So, you know, you got to. Live life knowing that, you know, you got to have balance, bro, because everything co- go around, come around. But there ain't no coincidence, you know what I'm saying? Like, 100%. You're going to always get out what you put in. Definitely. Um, so this album, you're pushing it. What are your plans with this? Like, you're just going to go hard pushing this project, and then and then where does G Herbo yeah. go from here? I'm definitely going to go hard with this project because I want this project to have the most life. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to go hard with this project. I'm coming right back, though. 
I'm coming right back with the deluxe going crazy, like a whole nother album on niggas. Oh, wow. um, then I'm coming right back after that with a whole nother project. I got two albums already, like, done. So you're not system. slowing down? No, I ain't slowing down. I got mm -hmm. two albums finished, complete PTSD, and one more that I'm coming with in the summer. Probably going to tour again. And I might drop again first chord on their ass, man. That's why I really been planning it. You know, getting shit together because I control my release schedule so mm. I could do me. Yeah, is there, in your mind, is there a need to be like, you have to weigh the options between keeping your foot on the gas or giving people a chance to yeah. kind of let, let them breathe. And I want, I'm glad, I mean, everything happened for a reason because I had my foot on the gas and, and really just, you know, with me putting the pressure on my team, I wanted PTSD to come out a long time ago. Mm. But yeah, I think, the way everything worked out and just with me working, I never stopped working. So the music kept getting better, planning and just trying to have the best life out of this project. Cause, and it's a blessing to have a team that I had because not only do I look at this project as something very special, everybody on my team, everybody around me know that this is a very special project, not only to me, for me, for them, for the world, for everybody. So they carrying it that way. And um, we plan to, to do just that. We putting this project out. I'm gonna come with the deluxe crazy, like a whole nother album for mm -hmm. real. Um, and shit, I'm gonna drop again and drop again and drop again, but I ain't gonna overwhelm them. It's gonna, I'm gonna take them on a journey with this one though. I gotta have my foot on the brakes because I did the planning to do so. Mm. Definitely. Well, hey, the new project's crazy, even though I guess I got a, a unlicensed version of it with oh, weird no, sound style skits. Yeah, yeah, you got the, you got the, um, they, that, I don't, I, I don't, you should have hit me up. I would have made sure they probably was just, we got I did, so I many, DM'd you on the gram. It was rushing and shit, man. You, I got to give you my number, man. I ain't <laughs> right. gonna lie. Let's get it. Firewall. Herbo, the album's crazy. Appreciate it, bro. Everybody go check that out on the streaming Appreciate services it, man. right PTSD. now. PTSD. Go get that, man. Get it. G Herbo, no jumper. Tour tickets available right now. Tour's crazy. Yeah, go get that. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. Go get that project. Appreciate you, G. Sure. My dog. My man. Yo, what's up, man? It's G Herbo. Just got finished watching my interview with No Jumper. And if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, at No Limit Herbo, man. PTSD everywhere.